knowledge they need to confidently make informed decisions. This book provides answers in simple and clear terms to most, if not all, of the questions you may have about credit, home ownership, and generational wealth. Finally, Home equips the reader with the confidence to be engaged with the home buying process without feeling vulnerable or exploited. Taylor made real estate easy is not just a catchy hashtag. It is real estate agent and radio personality Taylor Andre's goal. A goal to simplify one of the most challenging processes you will go through as an adult. A goal to educate you properly on credit and teach you the strategies to finding the home of your dream. It is not just a good book or an easy read. It is the secret to a seamless home buying experience. You are now listening to Smart, 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 Smart FM. FM, FM. Good rising, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I am Taylor Andre. Waking up with Taylor Andre has absolutely nothing to do with the time of day we link up, but waking up your third eye with unorthodox conversations leading to universal consciousness. He's back. So we got Paul Mary in the building, and we're going to sit here and have continue these conversations when it comes to stock and when it comes to making sure you good financially. So yesterday, Tiger Woods got into an accident Mm-hmm. And they were talking about the, um, what was it? The infinity, the exodus, the, mm-hmm. uh, hold on. Cause one like, of our, like our listeners went ahead and hit me up and was like, I have that car and that car saved my life. The Genesis, he said the Genesis, somebody hit him head on is the best warranty, safe, reliable, and a very nice luxury car. I was hit almost head on and my car was like a tank. I said, hold on, let's go ahead and go look at the stock real quick for Hyundai and see if it goes up in the next month because everybody want a Hyundai mm. since it's Tiger Woods life. <laughs> I was thinking like Paul Mary. That's what I was thinking like. Well, um, headlines like that can move a stock. Absolutely. Right. I don't know what Hyundai stock has been doing, but I can speak to a headline that's been in the news that everybody's been talking about, which is what's going on in Texas. Right. So as far as the 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 um, I guess the weather mm-hmm. being very cold out there, people's pipes were busted and all kind of craziness was going on. And this company called Generac, which makes generators, right? Generac shot up from let's see, going back in December, it was at 200 a share, and then when the situation happened in Texas, it shot up to 364 dollars. And, Damn. Yeah, and I'm like, wow. Well. That happened because um, four million people w- were without power. So naturally, their business exploded, right? So you get a situation where people are like, "Hey, I need a generator. I need a generator," and they're running out of them. And I supply and demand, supply and demand. That's the way it works, you know. So they happened to have uh, backup generators available in the time of an emergency, and they were able to profit off of that. So the stock shot up a hundred dollars a share. A hundred dollars. Hundred forty dollars. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Okay. That's what um, happens when luck meets preparation. You know, I was not in it, so you know, I'm just saying, I, I was, I was not in the position, but I'm just saying how a headline can impact the price of a stock. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about this email that I got on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I opened my email, so that email talk was I'm opening your emails didn't even apply to me. Oh, you got oh you got that one right. I was upset because <laughs> I was upset because there's a lot of companies on there that are that are up a lot. You know what I mean? Like one in particular was um I was talking to my wife about is EXP Holdings. They're a real estate, they're a real uh EXP Realty, they're a real estate brokerage, right? And even though it was on my list, I kind of took it for granted because I'm like, oh gosh, it's another redfin. You know, it's another it's another real estate Zillow or whatever. But that thing went from like I think thirty to eighty. Damn. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. On the list too. My wife, yeah, my wife is also a subscriber and she bought it at forty. I'm like, hold up. I missed this <laughs> one. <laughs> she listened <No. laughs> to you. You didn't listen to you, clearly. What happened? I said she listened to you and you didn't listen to you. She listened to the newsletter. I just I don't know why. I don't know. It must have slipped. I don't know. I put out the information and then it was like I didn't even pick up ass right now, now, huh? Maybe my order didn't get filled because I like to use limit <laughs> orders. I like to no serious. I like to pay a specific price for for companies, you know, before I just 
Like, listen, you go to the store and you're like, that's too expensive. That's overpriced. I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait till it goes on sale. Mm-hmm. And it's no different in the market. So it just didn't come down to the price I was willing to, to pay. And so the train left the station without me. And now how you feel? I mean, I'm going to tell you and your audience, Wall Street is like Penn Station. Well, you're in Massachusetts, so I don't know what the major. We get it. It's South Station, Boston. Oh, okay. So, so Wall Street is like South Station. There's always another train coming. So nobody has the monopoly on opportunities. I'm not going to say I have the monopoly on opportunities. Obviously not, right? But I'm just saying I wasn't willing to pay that price, and the train left without me. It happens. Yo, yesterday, GameStop. So I, my, my kids get out of school at 3 o'clock, right? So I'm looking at GameStop, and I'm like, it's $60 a share. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy an options contract. So I tried to buy the $80 calls uh, that expire tomorrow. And my order didn't get filled. So I'm like, okay, I'll wait till I get back from picking them up. I left at 3 o'clock. I got back home at like 325. Yo, it was at 90 already. It was at 90. Now it's at 130. Damn. Did your now, contract go through? No, I didn't. No, I didn't get filled. No, I didn't get filled. But I am in I am in um the movie theater one, AMC. So I did get filled on those. So I'm doing I'm doing good on those. So And they just what's the name? They just changed capacity. What do you mean? AMC? For movie, no, for movie theaters. Uh states okay. just capacity for movie theaters. So they raised it? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm also hearing that you can rent out the whole movie theater and play video games. So what's happening is um these these businesses are starting to adapt. And really in this day and age, if you can't adapt, you deserve to fail. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Period. Like the 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 world is changing so rapidly. Like I, I can't remember the last time I drove somewhere for a meeting, right? Everything is on Zoom now, everything is virtual. Like you have to adapt. So um what was I gonna say? So yesterday, T Mobile and uh, Verizon bought up a bunch of 5G spectrum, right? And the 5G spectrum a year and a half ago wasn't even on anybody's radar in terms of talking about it. But now these 5G phones are out. And then on top of that, everybody being home, it's having a major crunch on the data suppliers. The internet internet service providers are under a lot of pressure because people are using a lot more internet these days, right? So that can push a stock up higher. I would imagine that now that Verizon has picked up all that 5G spectrum at the auction, I would imagine that a lot of customers are probably gonna come their way because they want better service. Yo, so hold on. When I get a newsletter and like, for instance, this last newsletter that you sent me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 360 Digitech or um, dollar sign, QFIN is a China-based digital consumer finance platform. So I get the email and I'm like, okay, you you keep talking about, you know, the quarters, third quarters, loan originated 18%. And I'm uh-huh. like, all right, so, you know, what do I do with this? So when I, when I go ahead and I sign up and, and um, for those who don't know how to sign up, I'm going to put the link in the chat so you can go ahead and get your, your membership on. Mm. Once I sign up, I get the newsletter. What I'm supposed to do with that? I don't understand what you just said. Well, the, the purpose of the newsletter is just to bring attention to companies that are on a growth curve, right? It's not really meant to serve as like, hey, you should buy this or you should do that. It's just making you aware. That's why it's so cheap. I'm not really saying, hey, buy this many of this or or have this stop loss. I'm not doing all that. It's really a self-serve information platform. So the the QFIN in particular, right? When something pops up on my list, just as a rule of thumb, I initiate a position right away. Just because of the story I told you about with EXP, you know, me me just getting left behind. That came up on my newsletter and I'm waiting for a price that I'm comfortable paying and the stock did not wait for me or it didn't come and get me. It's like, nah, man, we're out of here. So when something hits the newsletter, I just make it a point of reference to just buy. And how much are we buying, Palmieri? Because we um, had this conversation last time about like budget and, and and stuff. And so let's like what what is a good number for us to like we have full time jobs, we have husbands, we have wives, we have kids, we do spend massive amount of money all on going outside to eat. 
what is a good starting budget when I get my newsletter per week? Am I putting in per week? I would say um, no more than five to 10% of your total portfolio size. So let me break down what that means. Let's say you've got $10,000, right? I would say no more than $1,000 in any one position, right? Um, unless you really like it. Like there's some on my newsletter that I love. Like this company, it's like my fifth child. Like there's, there's one in particular, um, it's called Magnite. And I've owned it since- I it bought went. Magnite! Yeah, I always talk about like, yo, that's my baby right there. I bought that. I'm telling you, that's like my fifth. That's the daughter I'd never had. <laughs> so I bought that at $6 a share. Uh, prior to it being Magnite, it was called the company Telaria. And Telaria is right here in New York. And then they merged with a company called the Rubicon Project. And so when that merger took place, they became the largest operator in their space. So I put it on the newsletter for the second time in December. But the first time it came on the newsletter, it was, it was under Telaria. Um, so in December, they got back on the newsletter at 20 something a share, maybe 30 a share, and it's went as high as 60. But I see big things. I see big things for that company though. I am, I'm currently up 97% from my initial investment. On on on, on Magnite. On Magnite, oh, yes. Yes. Just see, because I listened. See, my baby's out here taking care of people. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is come through, man. This is what I'm talking about. My baby's taking care of people in different states. That's how you feel. That's how you, you feel. Go on and buy some more. So, okay, this is a great question because I recently invested in um, the marijuana stock, the ETFMG, Alternative Harvest. Okay, that's not that's not me. Okay, so I recently invested and like made a lot of money off of it. Okay. But I, the link for the newsletter is currently on the bottom left-hand screen. It's mm -hmm. www.gumroad.com backslash a backslash, listen, right? 10, 24, 85, <laughs> 72, And so if you need that one more time, go mm -hmm. to YouTube, Taylor Andre, T-A-Y-L-A-A-N-D-R-E, and go ahead and pull up. And we are... um. We are 15 minutes and 55 seconds into the show. So just go ahead and scroll to the right. Uh, so I purchased and then they had a really big dip. So this was in the last month. Um, they had a really big dip and I bought on the wrong dip. And so I bought some stock initially. It rose to the top and then it dipped a little bit and I bought some more and then it dipped a lot of it. That's okay. a lot of it. I need percentages. Um, okay, hold on. All right, so I purchased and it went up on February uh, went up on February 9th. And then the dip, how do I make how do I find out what the dip went? They just tell me when to dip. What's the symbol? Give me the ticker symbol again. It's E T I don't know if that's the ticker, but it's E T F M G. Can't, it's not coming up. Alternative oh, harvest. Alternative harvest. Yes. Okay. MJ Market Buy. And it's a um. Is it an ETF? Yes. Oh, it's, it's the symbol is MJ, as in as in Mary Jane. Oh yeah, and as in weed. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I purchased like three months ago. Okay. And I, I bought low, like I made some money. And then when it had that dip on February 10th, on February 10th, yeah, it had a dip and then it had a really big dip on February 11th. And so, so like, how do I, I thought I was doing good because I hit it on the dip and then the right. next day it dropped it low to the ground. So right. how do you know when to buy? Like, it's one thing when that Gucci belt is on sale for it's typically five hundred dollars. Okay. It's one thing when it's on sale for four seventy five, and then it's completely different when it's on sale for three hundred dollars. So how okay. do we know when to buy when it's on at its lowest? Okay, 
How do you know when to buy when it's at its lowest? Yes. Uh, right like again. When we're today, it drops down a little bit. Do I buy? Like, how do I know when to buy? I'm going to use, okay, I'm going to take you to a website called stockcharts.com, right? Is Let's there an app for that? Can, huh? Is there an app for that? Yeah, no, well, no, I, I don't think there's an app per se, but let me see something here. And I think you should be able to share screen. If you go down to the bottom. Yeah, select the window. Wait, hold on. So for those that are just now tuning in, we have Palmieri in the building. Um, he's absolutely amazing. Desirable equity consultant. Uh, if you got $25,000, you could just give it to him and he can, you know, work well, you're not giving it for it, you. You're, you're or not giving it to I me. can put in these $5,000 and we can let him do what he do. Yeah. Can you see my screen? No. Oh, I have it. Yes. Okay, great. So now you're on stockcharts.com, right? Mm -hmm. And w you can just type in the symbol. So let's go to MJ, you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now I'm looking at the chart. Make a little zoom up for us. Hold so up. we don't have to like be in the screen. Hold on. Uh, let me increase the size. This is going to take a like your viewers may need to play around with this a little bit to really understand how this works. OK, we're learning one gather. OK. All right. So this is the stock chart for uh, MJ, this ETF you own. Right. And at mm -hmm. first glance, I'm not in it. But at first glance right here, you see this. Can you see? I can see that that green on yes. the left to the arrow. Yes. Right. So that is telling me it's it's overbought. And that's called the relative strength indicator, right? It's just the tool that traders use to measure if a company is overbought or oversold. So the the highest number on the relative strength indicator is 70. That's the highest the meter, the, the meter regularly goes. Mm -hmm. And then 90 is extremely overbought. So if you see it actually got up to 90 on February 9th. So you can actually click this little button here, inspect. And then it'll take you with a crosshair and give you the exact date, right? So that's February 10th. So it had an open of 34.50, a high of 34.58, a low of $29.19, and a close of 33.21. It also tells you how many shares traded, almost 18 million shares, right? And this thing was way overbought. So this would have been my exit ramp. I would have been, I, I probably would have been selling like right around here because it's just way overbought. And it, what happens is when a company's overbought, it just comes down eventually. It may, it may keep going up. I don't want you to get it confused. It can mm -hmm. actually keep going up in price, but chances are high. It's gonna, you know, profit taking is gonna happen. Okay, so I bought where this little second green thing is over here on um, the ninth. Here. No, the other one, go up. Here. This one I bought here when it went down and then it went that super du du duper down. And so right. I did lose a little money because mm -hmm. I, I bought prior to that super dip. And so how do I avoid that in the future? Well, when you're looking at a company, you want to make sure that it's not overbought. You don't want you want to make sure that you didn't miss the party. Like you're 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 basically kind of showed up late to the party here. Right. So mm -hmm. what I tend to do. This is a 50 day moving average. So this blue line is a 50 day moving average. And this red line is a 200 day moving average. Right. And so what I do is I make adjustments. I go and I change it to 20 days. And I change the second line to 10 days. And, and by what do what, say it again. What does that like? Explain that to us that don't know nothing about nothing. So what you're looking at, when I changed it to 20 days, it's the right. price action of the last 20 days, the average price action of the last 20 days, and the I, the average price action of the last 10 days. And so just as a rule of thumb, most traders, when a stock is trading above its 20-day moving average, we want to buy it because it's showing signs of strength. When a stock closes below its 20-day moving average, we want to move out of the way because now it's starting to show some weakness, right? So if you look, this company closed below its 20. 
Mm-hmm. But the other day, that was on February 23rd, that was two days ago, there mm-hmm. was a bit of a market sell-off, right? So this could have been like a little short-term anomal- anomaly. And then it reclaimed, it reclaimed a 20-day uh, yesterday on the 24th. Mm-hmm. And now it would be nice if it closed above the 20-day, which is $24.17. That would, that would be really good. Mm-hmm. That, to me, would make me feel like, okay, it's time to get back in. Now, it's not oversold. It's really at the midpoint and marijuana is hot right now. So there could be some sort of a catalyst that makes the stock trade higher. Before we came into the conference, I was actually on a virtual conference for the Benzinga Cannabis Conference that's taking place right now. It's a conference, two-day conference for uh, marijuana investors. Okay. So what is the, <clears throat> so for those who are just now tuning in, we're looking at stockcharts.com. stockcharts.com. And, yes. And this is a particular stock that I am invested in and had some questions regarding because I invested a little bit too early and the stock dropped. <clears throat> I'm still mm-hmm. doing lovely. Like the stock is still doing good. I lost a little bit of money, but how, if this, was okay you can't tell me what to do um i'm trying to like find the loophole here when is the I best time i'm for me just to telling you i would have took profits if, if if i were in and it ran up here i'm selling like i'll give you an example I, so before we started this conference i also sold this stock so this is mp right so mp yeah, you tell us not to hold you tell us not to throw stock away but hold it though no i i know but remember i'm 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 Okay, you have investors who are in it for the long haul, and then you have people who are just trading for income, right? I'm a little bit of both. So this look at it this way. This MP I bought in the 20s, mm-hmm. and it got up to overbought, and I took some profit. It got up to 40, and I took some profit, right? I didn't sell the whole thing, mm-hmm. but I took some profit. When it came back down to the 20 and the 10-day moving average, notice how it's hugging the line? Mm-hmm. So it's hugging the line, and then here you get a nice little breakout. So here, this this little candlestick is called a doji, which is an indecision. It's basically meaning that a um, what? A doji, a doji, d o j i, doji. Doji. Mm-hmm. And so what that signifies is that there's indecision. So every day, like including today, uh, there are buyers and there are sellers, and each side is trying to overpower one another like bloods in the crypt, so to speak, right? Maybe that's a poor example, but you you get the gist. Like Mm -hmm. they're trying to overpower one another. And a doji is typically formed when one side doesn't win the battle. So like it's a draw, right? So we have to revisit this battle for the next day. And whoever wins usually takes control. So if you see that doji happened here, right? Mm -hmm. The next day, the buyer is overpowered. Mm-hmm. You can see that evidenced all the way down here by the volume. You see the volume right here? Mm-hmm. So this is volume. So on this day, it was 3.5 million shares. And the next day was 4.2 million shares. Out of that, the difference, right? Probably 700,000 shares, something some in the neighborhood. The difference is the buyers. There were probably a whole lot more buyers than sellers on that day. And they overpowered the sellers. And that took the stock higher, right? Now today, this thing just tap the ceiling of overbought. I'm taking profits. I sold another, you know, another thousand shares for clients. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm selling this thing because it could come back down again to 38. I don't know. It could keep going, but I just trust my system. My system tells me that when something is overbought, it's time for me to move out of the way. I don't sell everything, but I sell, I, I, I lock profits in selling, take, you know, taking okay. profits. Okay. Great you know, moving on to the next question. If we are, if you bought a thousand dollars worth of a share, let's keep simple numbers, keep it really low. So you mm-hmm. thought a thousand dollars worth this share, you have a little profit. How much of that share or how much are you selling to take your profits while also staying in the game? I scale out 25% increments. So if I have a thousand, let's say if I have a thousand dollars, I'm selling 250 worth. Right. Or I'm selling 25 percent of the position. So um, if, I, if, I, if I have a thousand dollars worth of something and, and it increases, I'm not really looking at it as, as it increasing in a certain percentage range. I'm just looking at if it moves up higher and 
it's looking like it's about to be overbought. I might lock in half of the shares. I might sell half the shares or 25%. Because um, what I've come to realize is when you sell everything, if the company is doing good and they're making money, chances are high that they'll continue to do good and they'll continue to make money, which will continue to result in a higher stock price, right? So you take out a little bit of profit, but you still stay in the game and still make the money. Up. I sell on the way up. As it's going up, I sell on the way up. If I'm selling on the way down, I'm getting prices I don't want to sell for. Mm. I don't want to, you know, and listen, my way isn't, isn't the crystal ball end all be all. My way works for me, right? Everybody has to figure out what works for them. But you're saying, let's use easy numbers. You're saying, let's use a thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying this, if you identify a company like Magnite that you really like and, and you want to be with them long term and the way you figure that out is how the report card show sure. earnings report the earnings report that you receive in the newsletter that discusses the earnings oh the revenue grew mm. by this much and we expect business to be like this every 90 days these companies are reporting every 90 days they're telling you Let's take a look at magnite can we use this as a case study sure since we're both invested, mm -hmm. Magnite's my boo too, though. That might there be you your way, but that's my boo. That's it. So look, see, Magnite's overbought, right? Magnite was overbought up here. But you notice when it was overbought, it didn't really come down much as far as as, as far as profit taking is concerned, right? Bring us in a little closer because I have to like come close so I can imagine they do too. How's that? That's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so so Magnite is showing as as overbought here on the ninth, right? But Hold on, let's let's like because there's a lot of things here that we're looking at that many of us don't understand. So I see green at we see the lines at on the top. We see all the talking stuff on the left hand side. We mm -hmm. see the green, I mean the red and the white and the black. And so let's just give like an understanding of what everything we're looking at because I don't know what the hell we're looking at. Okay. Uh, let's see. So relative strength index, RSI, right? So on the top left side of the screen, you'll see this, the stock, the, the actual ticker symbol, the name of the company and the date and the time that this chart is being pulled up. Mm -hmm. The RSI is the relative strength indicator. The highest number on the RSI is 70 under normal circumstances. The mid number is 50. The lowest number is 30 and extreme oversold is 10. Extreme okay. overbought is 90. Right? Mm -hmm. I understand. As a rule of thumb for me, when I see a stock is way overbought, like up here, the mm -hmm. alarm goes off. Now I'm thinking take profits. You know, I'm, I'm thinking take profits, sell some, lock in some gains because it could eventually sell off. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come down. That's just the way it is in terms of it's going to come out from being overbought. It came down from the highs. It was at 61 and change, 62, came down to 54. Mm -hmm. Here you got this little sell-off in the market. This is a deep value day. So, so check this out, right? Came all the way down to 42. This is where people should have been loading the boat. But this is where maximum fear kicks in. People, people start to panic around, you know, in a situation like this. It gets sold off because this thing came down uh, $13, looks like. So what is that on? It's a T, but it's a super long T. So what is that red cross each, the each, line or that? The each Jesus candle is a day. So you're looking at, so you're looking at the period. Let's go to this side, right? Period daily, right? So each one of these candles, each one of these candlesticks is a day, February 5th, the 8th, the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and so on right? Mm -hmm. 16th, right? So on this particular day, February 23rd, the markets overall just sold off. Okay. So overall is 53.23. High is 54.98. That's, no, 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 that's the open. That's the open. Oh, open. Okay. Yeah. So OHLC, open, high, low, close. Okay. And what is V and Y? The V is for volume and that's how many were sold like eight million shares 
8.2 million shares were, were, were traded. It doesn't necessarily, it could be buys or sales. Okay. Yeah, it could be buys or sales. And why is? The why is yesterday's situation. So yesterday's close. Oh, okay, okay. So what I'm saying is it came down here. This is the low. See that? $42? That's the mm -hmm. low. That's the tail of this candle. But it didn't close there. It actually closed $10 higher. So you know what that tells me? The sellers pushed it all the way down. And then the buyers were like, yo, this thing is mad cheap. Let's load the boat. Yeah. So that so right there is when we buy. But when throughout the day, Paul Mary, like, let's say for instance, throughout the day, can I have I don't have control of this. You can see my my thing. You can see my I, I can't going? see you. No, I can see this. Yeah, I can't see you. But you can't see my arrow? Mm, on my no, screen? Okay. No. So let's say, for instance, um, that $10. So it's 2 p.m. and it's at $42. And uh -huh. then it's 3 p.m. and it's at $40. Like, at what point do I know? You, We really don't know, but what is the best time? Like, if I saw that it was going on sale and it's at $47, and I'm like, oh, I'm about to buy something. It's on sale. It's cheap. And then five, 10, two hours later, it's at $42. I could have saved $5 per share. Yeah, but this information though, Taylor, this, this information is historical in nature, meaning that the, the, it's passed already, the time has passed. You're not gonna get in at the bare bottom and you're not gonna get out at the tippity top. And you don't wanna, you know, as, at least for me, I don't wanna get stuck on oh my God, this thing went to 42 and I bought it at 44. I screwed up. You know what I mean? I don't want to do that. That's like a piece of property. I'm not going to lose out on a house because I don't want to pay 5,000 above ask. You follow what I'm saying? Like I, I want the house because I know that, hey, it's not going to stay at this price. I need to buy. So once I saw it hit 42 and it closed at 52, for me, long term, that lets me know that there's there's a lot of uh, demand down in the 40s. So anytime it comes down to that price and the fundamentals haven't changed, meaning business for the company is still the same or doing better or improving, that stock is going to continue to trade higher, right? But it, but you won't get the evidence until you get the quarterly earnings report. The quarterly earnings report, which is the company report card, is super important. If, if you have children and your, your kid is telling you, I'm doing my homework, I'm doing my homework, I'm doing my homework, but you get the report card and it says he's only been to school five days out of the whole month and he hasn't turned in any assignments, what are you going to believe? You're going to believe your kid or are you going to believe the report card? Mm. Well, if it's Boston Public School, I might be on the side <laughs> of the kid. But, no. <laughs> but you, know, you know what I'm saying. You listen, you know what I'm saying. You know, I got you. I got you. So, um, okay. That was a lot of information to ingest. Yeah, it, it, it is. And this is not something like, uh, this is, um, a, there's going to be a learning curve. It's important, but once you get it, you got it. You follow what I'm saying? Like you're, I'm doing this 14 years and I'm having to explain this to clients over the phone and I'm only giving them enough information to make an educated buying decision or a selling decision. Because if you overload them with too much information, they're just like a deer in the headlights. They don't move, yes, right? Yes, it sounds like me right now. But what I'm saying to you is, is that if your audience is saying, oh, I wanna do a thousand dollars, I don't want your audience taking a thousand dollars and trying to turn it to day traders. I want your audience taking a thousand dollars, investing it in a company they like, and then treating it like a bill and accumulating the shares. You follow what I'm saying? That's that's what I that's the most advantageous space to be in. My newsletter, right? My newsletter, I started off with, I did the experiment last year, beginning of 2020. And I started off with ten thousand dollars. And I just increased it by contributions of five hundred dollars a month. Just five hundred dollars, nothing astronomical. Today, that portfolio is sitting at fifty-eight thousand dollars. That's all newsletter. All of it. So you're looking at a situation where the magnites, 
the the digital turbine APPS. That's another one. I'll pull that up on a chart. I had that at six dollars from the newsletter. Let's pay these bills and let's let's come back to the chart. We're gonna pay these bills. We're gonna hit these commercials real quick. And when we come back, we're gonna continue speaking with Paul Mary and figuring out like y'all don't understand how much I want all of all of us to be in hold on. I, let me put my back myself back into <laughs> I want all of us to be completely in the know and to be able to move about the stock market in ways that allow us to create financial growth for ourselves and for our children. And so I would also like for you to, uh, Paul Mary, is there a way that a parent, well, I guess you could just forward it to your kid. If you are paying for the, um, the subscription, which is $25 a month, if you're paying for it and then share that information with your child and then have them watch these videos. And then there's a, a, billion videos on YouTube that they can watch as well to get a little knowledge and be in the know. But this is a game and Palmieri, like when we come back from a commercial, I would like for us to talk about how like a lot of this is for us, not like the language, the lingo, the, all of it's this. Intimidating. Stuff. It's intimidating. The language yeah. is intimidating. On purpose. So we're going to pay these bills. When we come back, it is going to be very possible. We are going to learn. And it's not, this is not the only conversation. So this is an ongoing conversation with uh, Paul Mary that we are going to have regarding stocks and making sure that we are financially literate. I am Taylor Andre. Waking up with Taylor Andre has absolutely nothing to do with the time of day. We link up at a vote. Waking up your third eye with unorthodox conversations leading to universal consciousness. You are enjoying the miracle of radio. 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 Number one urban Caribbean music. Radio. Radio. Spark FM. 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 ASAP After School Arts Program is a remote learning incubator focused on amplifying the voices of impacted youth in the community ages 17 to 24. ASAP kicks off with a screenwriting workshop sponsored by Final Draft, the leading software for professional screenwriters and filmmakers all over the world. Each student will receive the free software for one year and access to film professionals who will visit the class this Black History Month. The workshop is facilitated by award-winning filmmaker Demi Inga Martin, a Roxbury native and alumni of Boston's Youth Outreach Program. Her work has been seen on BET, VH1, and TV1. The screenwriting series has 35 slots available. Register now. Slots are filling up fast. Must have a Mac or Windows computer and the internet. Available for one class per week for one and a half hours and between the ages of 17 and 24. Orientation starts January 29th. For more information, email info at afterschool artsprogram.com or visit www.afterschoolartsprogram.com ASAP. Follow After School Arts Program on Instagram and Facebook. Are you tired of renting and need more of your own space? Are you getting stressful letters or calls from the bank? Does your home require expensive repairs and you just don't have the funds to fix them? Regardless of whether you want to buy or sell, Taylor Andre of Thumbprint Realty is here to help. From saving your home from foreclosure to walking you through the process of becoming a first-time homeowner, Taylor makes real estate easy. With your best interests at heart, knowledge of the market, and a passion for people, Taylor is dedicated and motivated to serve you. Good rising, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I am Taylor Andre, and I am determined and dedicated in assisting you in all of your real estate needs. Give me a call at 617-459-0041. Again, that number is 617-459-0041. Or you can email me at T-A-Y-L-A-A-N-D-R-E at thumbprintrealty.com. The People Station. Um, what is that? What is that? Spark FM. Yes. Good rising, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. I am Taylor Andre. We are currently speaking with Desirable Equity Consulting and specifically Palmieri, and we are talking about stock. So this is not the first conversation that we've had, but it's definitely an ongoing conversation that we will continue to have to make sure that we lay the foundation that we need to have a basic understanding of how to tr um, buy and sell stocks. We're not going to do trading because the, this is like 
<laughs> college kid money. This is your mortgage money. This is your savings or whatever this is for you. I'm not putting you in a position to lose anything. I want you to be fully informed and disclosure. Do not take anything on this show as gold. This is just a conversation. This is not actual consulting. If that's what you want to do, you can hit up Paul Mary directly um, and discuss consulting and you, you got to have $25,000. So if y'all want to, <laughs> y'all want to go fifths with me and we all can put in 5,000 and let him do what he do. We could do that. I'm down for that. But Paul Mary, we were um, speaking about Magnite. We spoke about MJ, some marijuana out mm -hmm. here. And so now what are we looking at? This is one of the companies that I had on a newsletter called Digital Turbine, right? Okay. And um, I bought this. Let's see. I'm going to change the time frame from daily to weekly because I've owned it for a while. Okay. okay. So changing the time frame from daily to weekly, this is where I owned it. Six dollars. Mm. So while and everybody dollars. Six dollars. Now, now it's sitting at seventy five. Yes, and never in my wildest dreams did I know that it was going to go that high. I'm just telling you, you know. And I this was in the newsletter. Yes, this is in the newsletter. Yes. And Ooh. so. Check this out. This is let's let's talk. About, let's show your audience one that I made a huge mistake on, right? In selling and completely getting out. This is called Trade Desk, and it, it was it was called the Trade Desk, right? So evidenced by TTD, the mm -hmm. Trade Desk. So I thought it had something to do with trading when I first saw it, right? And um, my first purchase with this company was forty dollars a share down here in 2018, $40 a share, right? When it got to 110, I sold all of it. Because you see, relative strength indicator? Yes. I sold all of it, all of it but though. You I told sold. us to only sell 25%. Look, we're in 2020, we're in 2021 now, Taylor. I'm showing you a position that I handled in 2018, right? If we're not trying to improve yeah. and get better, then what are we doing? I see, I got you. So so this one I sold at 110. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I sold it, got completely out of it, should have bought it back, but never in a million years. Is this $700? Yeah. It went to it went mm -hmm. to 1,972 is the high. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And the funny thing is that probably your audience doesn't really know about, you know. They probably don't know about companies like this because it's not a mainstream type company. But the trade desk really is is selling programmatic advertising, and they're basically selling the space on your television in the form of ads. That's how they operate. One of their biggest customers is Roku. So it's not too late. So when we look at stuff like this, Palmieri, is it too late? Because you said you came in when it was, 40 you know, on this one forty. I'm not buying this up here. I'm just, I mean, listen, there's people, you know, it's already an established company, meaning the chances of it going back down to 40 are very low. It, it's not impossible, but the chances of it going back down there are very low. I'm just looking at it from a position of, I have already missed the majority of the move. You follow what I'm saying? What's it going to go from 700 to 1400? Oh, and even you, I think you said this the last time that we spoke, right? What about the people who... <sighs> bought Tesla when it was like $1,600. Now it's at $2,000. Like, don't, there's still a little bit of growth, right? So at 700, if it does continue, like where are ads on your TV going? Where are ads on Roku going? Where are ads on uh, Amazon Prime? Oh, like, that all is not going away. Pro programmatic advertising is here to stay. Yes. Um, just so you know, Magnite is the trade desk's competitor hold on hold on go back to magnite let's look at magnite real quick yeah see <laughs> so now you say well i missed this one right you're like oh damn i missed this one but you know what this looks like it could potentially do something similar so uh, when you find magnite a company nine hundred dollars in a couple years you're so funny listen when you when you find a company that you like keep buying it keep accumulating it accumulate the shares, treat it like a bill. Every time you get paid, you buy. 
if you like it, if you like the company, if you don't like it, then don't buy it. But the idea is if you find something you like, you know what I'm saying? You, you get involved. So you I want to go back to, um, I know we, we had this conversation uh, last time and it was like a really dominant conversation that we had, but I, I think I'm always going to bring us back to this question as far as how do we choose when you have no knowledge of stock and this is the intro of your stock, how do you choose the stock in which you're going to purchase? By reading the company, by reading what the company does by reading the company's financials to see and understand if the company's in a growth phase or are they losing money. So Magnite recently had, uh, let's see here. Hold on one second. Magnite recently had a quarterly earnings report, right? So we're gonna go to MGNI Investor Relations. Real simple, MGNI Investor Relations, right? And that's for any company that you want to see. Matter of fact, I'm going to go, okay. So Magnite, fourth quarter earnings results. Boom. And that was February 24th. That was yesterday. That's right. That's right. There you go. So your company, your company gave a report card and you, you know, you probably didn't know. I didn't know. But check it out. Revenue. Can you see that? I'm going to blow it up. See if you make it bigger. So CTV pro forma revenue. So CTV is connected TV for your audience that doesn't know it's that's just an acronym. Make it easy. CTV is connected TV. Connected TV is the Amazon Fire Stick, uh, the Roku, um, Hulu, um, Disney Plus, anything that has to do with streaming or any devices that have to do with streaming is connected TV. So connected TV pro forma revenue grew 53% year over year. The mm-hmm. company's EBITDA margin of 37%, they posted that, right? So that's earnings before interest, taxes, debt, and amortization. Uh, they are now the largest, see this? Largest independent sell side platform, right? So Magnite about to do what, what's the name just did? It T- could, it what could. It? Uh, it, it trade could. Desk? TTD? Yes, TTD. It could do that. Now, the um, revenue was 82 million up 69 percent from fourth quarter 2020 from the previous qu- from the previous year Damn, that's like that's really good right because last you. quarter was just 90 days ago ask your audience if their business grew 70 percent year over year nah my business ain't grew that's right you know what i'm saying like what are we talking about here these numbers are fantastic full year total video Online video and connected TV revenue was 106 million or 45% of total revenue. Mm. We expect the revenue for Q1 2021 to be between 58 to 62 million. Now check this out. Here's the opportunity. They're saying we're expecting it to be between 58 and 62 million, right? If the company secures more customers and that number is like 70 million, oh, the stock's out. Stock's out. The stock's going to respond to that new information because now the expectation, here's the expectation, right? The word expect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The expectation is for 58 million to 62 million. We expect strong connected TV growth in Q1 2021. These are the real numbers. Net income was 5.9 million. So for all the revenue they earned, this is what they kept, 5.9 million. They kept was five that cents out of the eighty-two million. Out of the eighty-two million in revenue, mm-hmm. they, they, they kept, kept five point nine million. Five point nine million. Yes, that's what that was theirs to keep, right? Right. Um, that that equates to five cents per share, and okay. you're just taking you're just taking the net income and dividing that by the amount of shares that are outstanding. Okay. Now, um, this is where they summarize. This is where the CEO, Michael G. Barrett, and if you pull him up on YouTube, you can you can see videos of him talking. So we had a strong finish to 2020, led by contributions from connected TV and online video formats. Uh, As linear TV spend accelerates its move to add supported connected TV. We believe growth from this secular trend will fuel our growth for the foreseeable future. I love it. I love it. That's what I want to see. Okay. So, all right. Now here's the question. Do we just buy, do I buy today? If you like it, if you 
if you like what you're seeing, right? I like I'm, what I see. Okay, so if you like what you're seeing, what's the difference? Okay, so yesterday the report came out. It's at fifty two dollars. So this goes back to the house conversation. If you like the house, you're gonna wait for it to be five thousand dollars less, or you're gonna buy it now. Buy the damn, buy the stock now. I'm playing game. That's up to you. I we go in through this hour mag quick. Like, I miss you. <laughs> so funny. Um, so is there a name for stocks under $40? And um, is that called penny stock? And if not, what is the what is penny stock considered? A penny stock is something that trades on the OTCBB. So that's over-the-counter bulletin boards, or what's known as the pink sheets, right? So um when a company trades on the pink sheets, they are subject to far less scrutiny, far less oversight, and far less regulation. There are some, you know, they are, um, they, they they do have to abide by certain rules, but the, mm -hmm. the 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 rules are far less stringent. If that makes sense, you follow mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm I'm just gonna say this: dollar for dollar, there is nowhere on the planet that you will find the information that I'm giving out, the effort that I'm using to explain it from someone that looks like me, bar none. You'll find somebody that's talking about the big name stocks, the Teslas. I wanna bring to my people, the companies like the Magnites and the TTDs before anybody else figures them out. See, big money is what took, mag um, big money took the trade desk from 110 to 900. Small retail investors didn't do that. You, you also have to understand that um, certain hedge funds, pension plans, and exchange traded funds, they won't touch a stock until it gets to a certain size. I know it sounds crazy. You're like, wait a minute. Y'all gonna wait till it's, ex till it's more expensive to buy? They're gonna say absolutely, because that means it's a proven business. Mm. They don't wanna now dump a hundred million into a company and it's a fluke. They don't wanna do that. So they wait until a company is like small cap, mid cap, large cap, mega cap. So mega cap is like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix. Those are your very, very large cap and established companies. But what if your audience was buying Netflix when the red envelopes were flying around? Listen, we talk about this all the time and my feelings still hurt about that. I'm just saying, but the next one is right in front of you. Like they're coming to you every Monday. They're coming out. If it's not a holiday, I'm posting every Monday. Yo, listen, man, these are the companies. This is what it is. You do your own research. Some of my subscribers are going to do better than me because they may actually buy a whole lot more. Like they may find a company and fall in love with it. And they'd be like, yo, this does this. This is going to be crazy. So part of what I teach people is if you can find out where the money, if you can find out where the crowd is, you can make money. If you can predict where the crowd is going to be, you can make a fortune. Because wherever there's people congregating and large volumes, money is being exchanged. You follow what I'm saying? So I got you. Yeah. So like, listen, when Roku first came on the scene, I was like a parrot. I was telling everybody, cut the cord, cut the cord, get a Roku. And even me as a professional in the business, when Roku came public, I bought a little bit of it at 40, a little bit of it, even though I was a parrot for the company. And now it's at 400 a share. Played myself, played myself, <laughs> played myself. But I won't I make those mistakes you. again. Desirable will... Equity Consulting, AKA Palmieri. I thank you, I love you, I appreciate you for this information. We are gonna continue like this isn't just one time. Mm. This is a continuous relationship, partnership. We are going to continue to like that learning curve. Right now, this is the cement for the foundation, and we're going to build that Trump Tower. <laughs> that ain't never going to come out yet. Hey, Tim, you know what somebody said to me recently? They was like, you know how you got to where you are? They said, yo, you spent 10,000 hours. And I thought about it. I had to run the math. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing this for 14 years. I'm like, yeah, they're right. I've spent 10,000 hours doing this. So now it's like, it's as, it's as simple as speaking English or doing one plus one equals two. Like, it's not that... Um, People are overthinking it, I feel like. Thank you. Well, we got to get out of here. I thank right. you. I love you. I appreciate you. Please use that link and reschedule so we can have you on again.
No problem. And if you missed any of today's conversation, you can always head over to YouTube, T-A-Y-L-A-A-N-D-R-E.com, Desirable Equity Consulting. Google them, get that information. And if you got 25000 go have a personal conversation with Paul Mary. I'm not there yet. But, you know, if I have four other people, we can be there immediately. You know what I'm, <laughs> I, working, on? You know, you know what I'm working on right now? The what? Robinhood IPO. Getting my clients access to the Robinhood IPO because they're about to go public. Um, Roblox is about to let's go Let's have public. this conversation at a later date. Yes. Yes. <laughs> have All an right. amazing day, Palmieri. Right. Take care. Peace, everybody. Bye-bye.